What's up guys, it's Track and it's time for another Top 5 Friday. You know what it is. Uh, this one's actually gonna be pretty, pretty humbling. Why? Because I'm running out of ideas. So, as a combination of just an incredibly terrible YouTube climate. For example, this is how YouTube feels as a YouTube creator right now. As well as a lot of professional obligations, as well as a lot of travel and event coordination, I have been behind on some of my mods. Now, unlike other YouTubers, I am still very much a modder at heart. I've actually done a lot of mods that get kind of swept under the rug because they've been kit mods, and I don't really like doing kit mods. Obviously, my bread and butter is like modding properly, like taking things, fabricating, painting, etc. I love doing body work, lots and lots of different facets to that that make it interesting and fulfilling. So. Uh, those are also super duper time intensive and they just don't rake in the views like they used to, which again... So, without further ado, here are the top five projects that I'm never gonna finish. Coming in at number five, we've got these guys. What are these guys? Well, uh, as evidence, they're both like halfway through their paint job and bodywork camera shots. When I say bodywork, they've been completely smoothly label and logo removed. This one has had an integration onto it of this 3D printed part, which extends its front grip out just a little bit. And it's so ultra smooth, like you wouldn't know necessarily that it was longer without the direct comparison. However, uh, I did just want to uh, to talk about this so you can see here we do have a white handle protected underneath this red. Uh, we could actually remove some of this tape. Like I paused this project at a point where I wasn't even thinking about what the next step was. Ooh, so satisfying. And for each one of these I have like an excuse. So I'll tell you what the excuse for these two was. This one was going to be called the Jethroco, like a Jericho, but Jethro. Uh, and this one uh, was going to be called the Megalodon, uh, which uh, this was going to be a mega hammer shot. And this was going to be a Boomco hammer shot. And neither one got finished because my vinyl logo guy is like really, really hard to get a hold of right now. He's uh, gotten really into like modding cars hilariously. And so we haven't heard much from custom 3D Nerf recently and I'm kind of trying to find like the proper vinyl logos and then after vinyl logos we'll have to 2K it but the weather's really bad right now but uh, that's what these two are going to be. They just need vinyl logos because anything worth doing is worth doing right. Uh, <laughs> they're pretty simple though which is why they share a slot and they're coming in at only number five. Let's move on to something with a little bit more meat on its bones. So that is, uh, is pretty powerful, pretty girthy, as PDK would say. <laughs> Don't tempt me with a good time. Uh, this is a full uh, Hyperfire Rapid Strike Centurion integration. And that is to say that it's got a Rapid Strike front end, a Hyperfire Magwell and sort of control setup in here, as well as the Centurion for a lot of its working parts. So uh, what does it look like inside? Well, it's been almost completely resin filled. It's super duper smooth cast 65D to inside. And then uh, I had to do some light body work inside as well. So like when I got this, I actually bought the project off of Nick Rari or Nick Marvin if you're a Northeastern nerver. <laughs> nerfer, nerver. But uh, he wasn't willing to finish it. I think that he had just sunk a lot of time and a lot of money into it. And he was very frustrated with where the body work was at specifically. I know that in particular, he wasn't happy with this area. There was a monstrous gap up here that hadn't been filled. So we filled that up. And then he was still trying to figure out where he wanted to put some PW WMs back here and I think that I'm just going to omit them entirely from the project because they're just not worth fooling with but you can see how incredibly clean this hyperfire shell kind of is mated into this centurion and I think that it would just be an absolute waste of the project but he sold it to me for a very very good price for the project it had one of very few Snicka's hyperfire cages that came with it and I just really wanted to get the chance to use that and make like a real HVZ rifle I got halfway through the paint scheme for it and again got sidetracked by a lack of decals uh, but this is probably the most likely to be finished before the end of the year because I wanted to do it up Bumblebee themed. Bumblebee is my favorite transformer. Why? Well... <laughs> It's 
because B is obviously the best Transformer. I think he's way cooler than Optimus, and he is definitely my favorite, both OG Transformer, and I really like his portrayal in the Michael Bay movies. In fact, I like really, 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 uh, Transformers is the only Hasbro property I haven't gotten the chance to work with formally. I have a project that I wanna put together for Transformers. It would have been perfect for the Bumblebee movie, but uh, I just don't think that I'm gonna have the time because it is really, really involved. However, if you're watching this, so anyway, that is the Bumblebee work in progress shell. Like it's very involved, but it's very clean. Half of it is Nick's work. Uh, so I'm really like poaching half a project and then giving it the finishing touches and paint job that it so very, very deserves. But very excited by this one. Hopefully weather doesn't prevent me from getting it out in time for the movie. I need a weapon. Like this one? Eh, probably not so uh this is a project that like i will finish someday hopefully but it just might never come to fruition and it really stinks because boomco took the wind out of my sails in a big old way so uh rob Lair at one point had these ultra rare uh like not squirt guns, they were like electronic light guns, uh, and they were immediately taken off the shelf hilariously because they're a direct ripoff of the MA5B assault rifle from Halo, which is coincidentally one of the best guns in the game. Uh, it's very, very good in CE, um, and then it's reiterated throughout its lifespan, but it's got a simple, iconic, super cool space rifle sort of a jam going on and it's bullpup so what better shell to kind of augment it into <laughs> there's spider webs in here can you tell i haven't messed with this in a while uh what better way to augment it into a nerf blaster than with a raven shell so this actually predates like 3d printing being prevalent in our hobby um 3D printing would have made this much easier. People would have printed a body kit that mated to the Raven. In fact, I'm amazed that they haven't done it yet, but this was the shell work for what was going to be my Master Chief rifle build. Like, I did a battle rifle forever ago. It was very fulfilling work for me creatively, and I wanted to live through that again with the Raven making the MA5B. Like, I really, really dig this shell, and actually, with the integration work that I've already done, this is like uh, epoxy putty inside and out with some shell fill plastic uh, that's a theme for these is like I like doing the body work and then when it comes time to like wet sand and refine this down like I just haven't thrown this in my shower yet but uh needs needs a lot of work obviously this is still very bulbous needs to be completely wicked down needs to be evened out on both sides the shell being asymmetrical is a huge challenge for this project and overall just like when you have the MA5B shell from Boomco like direct already shooting blasters it would be so much easier to iterate that and so it really just like so that is my long lost uh, Halo rifle project. Uh, it was a pseudo collaboration with Rob Lair. I know that uh, Nerfomania was there when I did this body work, but I think that that's been like three or four years ago now. Like it's been a long, long time. Uh, but eventually, maybe someday, never. Uh, this is number three. Let's move on to number two, which is one that I actually feel pretty guilty about. Coming in at number two is the Mabel Mock. Can you guess where that name comes from? Jim Christmas, it's a machine! Super duper underrated Disney film, and also, uh, your boy looks like Milo Thatch. I should cosplay Milo Thatch. Anyway, uh, this is Mabel Mock. Mabel Mock was designed and named and kind of hydro dipped and themed around the Leviathan uh, concept because you guessed it, it's supposed to be built inside the Leviathan body kit, which is of course the, I want to say Argus um, body kit. It's a direct take on from the swordfish. The Leviathan is bigger, bolder, badder. And I actually have the Leviathan afterburner prototype body kit. And it's just such a slick kit. It looks so good. It's so very clean, but I wanted to do so much to this 
all at once that I really, really just got caught up. The devil is in the details. So it was going to be a Fang Fang afterburner two-stage setup with removable second flywheel cage. It was going to be full auto. It was going to have LEDs. The LEDs were going to shine through uh, some Biggs NZ custom aquamarine parts. And I have all of those things. And for the longest time, I was waiting on a MOSFET because four Fangs pulling current plus a fifth motor for the full auto kit was just going to be way too much and it needed to be fetted. Uh, the switch setup was going to be complicated as well, making sure that the front cage wasn't always on. And I mean, you can believe me or not, but I think that I have a complete understanding of what that circuit diagram looks like in my head. It's just the act of sitting down and syncing 10 hours into LEDs and switch and everything. That was the other issue is that I want my usual switch placement here, but it's both not compatible with the kit and they're very difficult to find right now with Radio Shack out of business. In the arms of the age. So anyway, someday this gorgeously hydro dip shell might come back and it might be like this really cool full-scale primary build that does exciting things. But every day that I delay, uh, the kit itself becomes less new and less exciting. And while the project will still be cool, we already know what happens to really cool project builds on YouTube. All right, coming in at number one, we also get a special award for most likely to be completed soon. Uh, there's a chance that with friends coming down from Ohio, I will actually be able to dedicate some time to this build even before I finish the Bumblebee build, which again requires like vinyl and 2K and a bunch of stuff. I'd love to 2K all of these at once, but what do these two things have in common? Nothing, exactly. So believe it or not, I thrifted half a Terra Scout. Uh, it was the weirdest thing ever. It was in the box. It was missing all of the RC components. So we negotiated a super sweet deal on this half of a Terra Scout that looks like not only has it never even been hooked up, but like nothing is going on with it. So it's got one, two, three, four, five, six wires coming out. I assume that some of those are to control the Camry bits, but uh, the others have to be to control the rapid strike conduits. And and I love doing demolisher integrations. I love turning them into rifles. So the general theory of this is, and you're welcome to steal this idea if you like internet, um, to do that, except way less small soldiers E. Um, the plan is to cut off the missile launcher and add the Terra Scout to it as an undermounted full auto. Then you'll have the semi-auto from the top and I would like that to be like a high powered flywheel cage, like an OFP with a lot of crush. And then to have the Terra Scout shooting accurately full auto in the bottom. And that is the plan is to make it into like an HVZ style primary in that regard. So I don't even know what the geometry of the cage inside here is, but if it is a rapid strike, then the Nyx cage will fit inside. For those of you that have been curious, I know they've been sold out for a little while. The Nyx cage is currently available at out of darts and foamblast.com. Links in the description box below. Well, that plug was shameless, but uh, this is seriously a project that I do want to work on. I've got a name all picked out for it. I think that it could be really cool. Obviously, all of this nonsense has to go here, get rid of all the indexing parts. There's going to be a lot of body work mating these two shells together, but once mated together, I think that it'll be not only a really cool integration, but unlike other popular integrations like the Straven and whatnot, due to the cost of the Terra Scout, I think that it'll actually be pretty unique, and that's kind of what the channel's always been about. Out is like doing stuff that's pretty unique. Um, see if I can't isolate and keep some of this uh, this camera equipment. Now, there's no reason that it wouldn't keep working. The camera in and of itself is hot garbage, but since that's all mounted up here and it would all be powered off of the same lipo, I think think that there's a chance that we could keep it. Uh, especially since we would just load the SD card in and out. And then we'd have like an automatic gun cam. It would be terrible, but it would be worth it for like the three second blip where it would have like one cool shot in it. But I think that this is an interesting project and I'm definitely going to task Vlad with kind of like motivating me and keeping me honest and helping me uh, get at it because I like both that this one's a low, they, they load differently, which is kind of cool. And as a righty, uh, it'll load from this side, which means that the magazine will be less likely to get in the way. It's not like you'll ever have to cross your body with it. But that's my Demolisher Terra Scout integration idea, aka the Demo Scout or the Terralisher. 
Terrell Usher sounds like it should be on a list. Um, I have a better name, trust me, better name coming. All right, so that is my top five projects that I will never finish. Uh, but something that I will be doing is attending Jared's epic nerf battle. You like that, kids? That's called a segue. I will, of course, link to it in the description box below. There's lots of exciting stuff happening at Jared's Epic Nerf Battle this year for the first time, like, in full force. Last year was like a teaser, a taste. This year, in full force, Hasbro will be present. There will be hands-on new Toy Fair blasters at the event. It is a spectacle, not to be missed and because of certain limitations because of both AT&T Stadium which is the most incredible venue to play in in the world uh, the event is guaranteed going to sell out and I know that other creators aren't warning you about this in advance because they know that it's going to sell out but I want to see as many of my fans there as I possibly can like getting to see you guys and interact with you guys and those of you that travel from other states other countries uh, the west coast the east coast like Mexico like that is what makes Epic Nerf Battle so very special for me. The venue is special. The games are epic. It's an insane trip for me. It's like one of the absolute highlights of my year. But the best part of that, the cherry on top for me is getting to see you guys. And I would hate it. Hate, hate, hate. Because every year I make this video and I tell you guys that it's coming. And then every year the tickets sell out. And when the tickets sell out, I always get the, oh man, I wish I could have gone. It would have been great. I live in Arlington or something. And you like were super close or you really wanted to and you had a birthday coming up or something and you couldn't make it like it's worth attending it's an absolute spectacle it's a ton of blaster action and it has never been epic on the scale that it will be this year with as many people and as many moving pieces as there are going to be so this is my warning get your tickets now if you're thinking about coming pick up your tickets now they are going to sell out faster than ever before and they are cheaper than you can possibly get them at the time of making this video we have already sold out of tier one and two tickets which means that they're still I think a little bit cheaper than a stadium tour but uh, they're only going to get more and more pricey from here so if you're considering it I think it's March 23rd, uh, Arlington, Texas, AT&T Stadium, Jared's Epic Nerf Battle 4, uh, much love, Nerf on, Drag out. Uh -huh.